Hey everyone, um, sorry it's been so long s since I have done a video. Um, my kids just went back to school, so I'm hoping to do them once a week now. Um, I realize I always say that, but I have a tendency to overbook myself, so um, I'm trying to fit them in this week. I'm hoping to do two. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe I can uh, fit them in. So um, today I wanted to talk about altars. I've had a few people over the last few weeks. Some are uh, new, some have been doing it for a little bit, and they have some questions about how to set up an altar and offerings, and I know everybody's probably really, really tired of hearing, um, you know, that you just need to go with your intuition, and, um, you know, you should put on your altar with uh, things that feel right to you, and things that speak to you, and things that are uh, maybe nostalgic, or you have precious memories attached to, and all that is very true, um, but it's also... I understand frustrating and vague for people who are new and who would like to set up an altar, either a working altar or an ancestor altar. Um, these uh, are two different things for me, um, and I think they are for most people. I don't know a lot of people who set up an ancestor altar who also do work for clients or work for themselves at it. Um, they may do general, like, um, asking for... Uh, protection blessings from their ancestors at it but that's that's just sort of goes along with prayer so i'm not going to really get into like um these detailed semantics um so uh ancestor altar uh, i'm going to cover pretty quickly because i don't think that's what most people are asking about i could be wrong um so ancestor altars are a a place where in your home where you would have pictures of deceased um, relatives and older ancestors. I'm not sure how far you have to go back in your line before somebody's considered an ancestor versus a relative. I imagine a hundred years or something like that. Um, so you have uh, pictures of uh, your deceased loved ones on your altar. It's typically covered with a white cloth. Um, you also, it's common to leave out a glass of water or several glasses of water, depending how many ancestors or relatives you're offering as well as um, things like a candle, fresh flowers, and any mementos or items that they gifted to you, items that remind you of them, items you got once they passed on. Um, so if you have a rosary or a watch or you know a piece of jewelry or something like that that, um, that someone gave you before they passed or you got it um, after they passed, it was passed down to you. Those are things that you would put on your altar as well. Um, there are some people who have pictures of ancestors on there that are not necessarily related to them. So people that they really ex respect and admire, and maybe they are, maybe they have a cultural significance, maybe they don't. So I have a lot of friends who have pictures of Frida Kahlo on their ancestor altar. Now they're not related to Frida Kahlo, but um, it was somebody who was very into influential for them and they want to pay honor and uh, tribute and respect to her. So, and I think that that's absolutely fine. Um, again, it's all about what you and what you're called to do, what's comfortable for you. Um, a working altar, um, again, there are it, there are pretty basic offering, offerings that we put on altars that are just classic across the board. That's, that's how we do it. So um, a candle or several candles, I personally, um, I keep one candle lit on my altar at all times to, in the significance of allowing my clients to find me, allowing customers to find me. So uh, people out there who are looking for a spiritual worker or they're looking for spiritual supplies and they don't know where to, what, where to look. So I keep one, one vigil candle, one like Novania candle, glass encased, um, like this on my altar um, that's sort of a conduit or like a, uh, a messenger candle about work about customers about establishing relationships connection letting them get in touch with me so um, you may want to do that for your um, type of work that you are in um, if you are in a sales based business or you you deal with the public uh, you may want to keep something like that on your altar I also keep um, items that are 
uh, protective amulets or protective talismans or protective curios on my altar. And these are just to sort of generally remind me and generally um, uh, keep the energy on my altar um, protected at all times. So when I'm doing work for my client clients, I feel that it is that it's protected because of these objects. For me, um, I have a small picture of St. Michael here. And I have other things like um, some evil eye agates. Um, I have a jet skull. This, this skull is made out of jet. Jet absorbs negativity. Um, so things like that. Um, and that's for your general protection. You may also want to keep something such as a candle for general purification of your space. So things that you want to utilize and bring into your space every day, protection, purification, um, you know, something to uh, help you with, with work, maybe something to help you with your family, maybe something to help you with your relationship. You want to continuously burn a, a relationship type candle or something like that. So these are things you're constantly working on in your life that um, we don't want to neglect because we know that when we start to neglect an area, um, it falls apart and then you have to call people like me. So uh, if you keep these sort of, I keep four candles going at all times. They're, um, they're all really based around my, client, uh, my clients and keeping things sort of flowing between me and them and uh, my work. And uh, so I, I keep four vigil candles going at all times. Um, the one I do switch out regularly, well, I switch them all out after a while, they burn down, obviously. Um, the one I do switch out daily is my Orisha candle. Um, I, on Monday, I put one there for Ilegua. Um, Tuesday, I do Ogun. Wednesday, I do Oya. Thursday, I do Okosi. Uh, Friday, I do Oshun. Saturday, I do Yemeya. Uh, Sunday, I do Obatala. So uh, those are the days of the week that correspond with the Orishas. So I have um, vigil candles for them and every day I, they go on first. Uh, their, their vigil candle is put on first. It's dressed first, so I put oil on the top of that candle first. I light it and then I set my offerings of, um, depending on who I'm feeding that day, It'll be a uh, spirit like rum or whiskey or something like that. Water, black coffee. Um, so it's depending who uh, whose day it is, is what I'm filling that cup with. Um, Elegua, he has his own place in my home behind the door. That's traditional. Um, so his can he has one candle that stays there that always gets lit first because he is the, he's the messenger. He's the gateway between all of the other Orisha. So in order to speak to them, you have to go through him first, which is why he's always lit first, no matter what day it is. On Monday, he's put on my altar, but every day his space behind my door, his little altar, his candle is lit first, and he's always given black coffee in the morning because that's sacred to him. So um, those things, your, your candles, along with um, very basic offerings of uh, fresh flowers, your incense, maybe a candle in the color of something that you're specifically working on at the time pink for relationship or white for purification black for protection blue for healing um, yellow for creativity or energy um, orange for open roads or employment green for prosperity um, finance abundance you know etc etc purple for um, success and uh, um, compelling and courage red for strength sex power so uh, you may want to have one of those on your candle depend or on your altar depending whatever you're working on at the time um, I keep a small dish of really sacred stones that friends and neighbors have given to me over the years some of them my mother gave to me um, those are just meaningful for me and I there are stones that I there are a few stones that I use in my work pyrite and lapis emerald um, carnelian so I keep a small dish of those. I have an incense sensor that stays there that I continually burn my incense in for my uh, workings for my clients. And um, I have several really large roots that I use to work with for my clients. Um, in my Grigri bag, which I've had since I was like 11 years old. Um, so things like this, and I have statues on there, which there's a million pictures of my altar online. You can see the statues that I have on there. 
those rotate somewhat. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, I think, I hope that I've covered like sort of the basic ideas of, of what you would have on there. Um, where you place your altar, that is usually determined as to what's convenient in your home and where you have space. There are a lot of people that say it needs to face east. Mine happens to face east. Um, a lot of people can't do that. You have to put one where you have space and that's absolutely understandable and acceptable. So um, what I do suggest you invest in are some nice altar cloths. Um, so, uh, or do, you can go to the, the craft store and get pieces of material that are long enough to cover it. That's a very inexpensive way to do it. I also suggest that you invest in some mismatched dishes that you can pick up at garage sales or yard sales or um, um, secondhand stores so that you have a set of plates to put offerings and workings on that are reserved for that. Um, it is traditional to not use your dinnerware or the dishes you eat off of to do your workings off of. Um, and when we, uh, speaking of offerings, I wanted to talk about that really quickly. Um, I get a lot of questions about, well, how do I leave an offering? Well, it's very, it's very similar to, it's exactly like this. If you have, um, I have an elderly neighbor who lives next door to me. My community is very, very tight. And um, once a week, I take her uh, a big thing of fresh mozzarella and fresh tomatoes from my garden. And she loves it. So I go over there and I take those to her and I give them to her. And, you know, of course, she says thank you and everything. And, um, you know, we chit chat for a little bit. And uh, then I go home. I don't, I'm, I'm not standing there waiting for her to eat them or try them or waiting for something to happen or like, you know, her to like do cartwheels about it or jump up and down or send me some sign or something. You know what I mean? So I think when people are leaving offerings, they don't feel like it's enough to just put it out there and say, here, this is what it is. I'm giving this to you because I'm grateful for your influence in my life. I'm grateful for letting me pray to you and speak to you whenever I need to. And here are some offerings to show my gratitude. People somehow don't feel like that's enough. They feel like they're going to put those offerings down like fireworks are supposed to shoot out of it or something. Just It's just like giving something to a friend. You, you don't wait for some big you know reaction or some big huge gesture of gratitude. You give because you want to give. You don't give because you're going to get something back. So um, if you're setting out offerings and expecting like, uh, well, I'm giving this to you and by the end of the day, I want my request answered. Um, you're doing it for the wrong, complete wrong reasons. And um, my suggestion would be for you is to maybe um, find out if a neighbor could use some help or use an extra meal or um, find out if there's an organization in your area that could use some volunteers or maybe um, call in and check on a friend you haven't in a while because you're missing the connection. You're missing the whole idea behind it. So um, I would recommend that you get in touch with that sort of doing things just out of pure gratitude and just for the sake of doing them for someone else instead of expecting some big like, you know, boom, like parade to go on after you do it. Um, when you give an offering, give an offering from your heart. Say your prayers, say why you gave it. Um, and, and let it be, uh, let it sit there until we typically let offerings sit there until they start to decompose or until they are no longer acceptable or edible to us. If you wouldn't eat it at a certain point, it's time to set it outside and return it back to the earth. So, um, yeah, I hope I covered some basic rules and, uh, that cleared up a little bit. I don't know if it did or not, but I was getting some questions about it. So I thought I would try and um, get a little more specific about altars and um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below you can find me on Facebook under Conjured Cardia um, there'll be a link to my site on this video and um, I appreciate you watching and y'all have a blessed week